Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Better Late Than Never podcast. My name is Alexis. I am the host and I'm really excited about today's episode because today is Easter Sunday, um, which this time of year is my absolute favorite time of the year. Um, just springtime and Obviously, I love Easter. I just love all the pastels, all the bunny decorations. The farm is starting to turn like bright green everywhere. The I have a peach orchard in my pretty much my front yard, and the peach trees are starting to bloom. They have these like really beautiful pink flowers. And then obviously, of course, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. So yeah, I'm in high spirits today and I'm really, really excited to dive into what I have for you guys. Um, if you could, I would love if you would go find me and follow me on my other social platforms. So Instagram at Alexis Noel. Alexis has two S's. Noel is spe spelled N-O-E-L-L-E. And then I'm also on TikTok as well. So uh, follow me there. Um, pretty much if you are wanting to keep up with my daily farm life um, and kind of just want words of affirmation and um, just things to get you through the day, that's kind of how my Instagram looks. So yeah, definitely go follow me there. Um, today I wanted to talk about Easter, the story of Easter, and pretty much go over all of Holy Week, um, or Passion Week, as some people call it. Um, I, it's so funny because this year was the first year in my entire life, which I'm like, can't believe it, but it's the first year that I have sat down and actually like really studied Easter and what the meaning of Easter is and what all led up to Jesus dying on the cross and resurrecting. Um, and let me just say that doing this has, I mean, I've already have such a fire for the Lord and such a deep relationship with him, but just studying about Easter has seriously brought me so close to the Lord and if you are a new believer or you're not a believer and you want to start learning more about um the Bible and you're you're kind of like on the verge of like you don't really know what to believe but you're definitely open to learning start with the Holy Week start with that study like study the meaning of Easter because it oh, it's just so powerful and you really see the love that Jesus has for us and you can see how literally just so good he is because it's so hard to be a human like <laughs> it's so hard to be a human we are faced with temptations every single day and we sin pretty much every single day and this man he was a man he was a human being was perfect in every single possible way and he knew that he was going to die on the cross and knew that he was going to have this like terrible death and the worst way to die the worst way to suffer and he still was perfect. The people who arrested him, he didn't spit in their face. He didn't cuss them out. He didn't go beat up Judas when he realized when he knew that Judas was gonna um, portray him. It's just mind blowing. So yeah, I think that studying Easter is a perfect way to begin your walk in faith. Let me also start by saying that I am not a preacher at all. I actually say that one of my biggest weaknesses is explaining things. Everything up here in my mind makes so much sense, but it's just putting it into words. I think I'm a great storyteller, so I like to kind of 
go it go at it about that like I want to tell a story but I also want to have all the facts right as well so I'm not a preacher I really hope that all of the factual things that I say today are correct um, but this is my interpretation of the Bible and my interpretation of what I've read so have grace for me you guys um, and leave your feedback what did you get from the story but yeah we're basically just gonna dive into it we're gonna talk about the whole week so Sunday to Sunday and what happens and what led Jesus to the cross so I've got my book of notes here so yesterday it was a beautiful day like I said it's so green so I live in I still live in well, I kind of live on the outskirts of the college town that I went to. Um, and there is a beautiful, like, green, like, usually all college campuses have, like, some kind of, like, greenery area or whatever. But we have one called Sweetheart Circle. And it's basically, like, it's a huge circle <laughs> around this big, beautiful, like, I want to, I guess you call it a field with massive, beautiful trees old like oak trees I think they are so I went and I set up a little picnic and pretty sure got a little bit of yeah I got a little bit of sunburn um but yeah I just did my notes I had a little picnic date with Jesus yesterday and it was really really nice um but yeah let's get started on this okay so holy week um or passion week um as it sometimes refers to in the bible which Actually, and I did not know this, but passion is actually a Greek word that means to suffer. That is crazy to me. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously Jesus suffered on the cross. Um, he suffered a great big, big deal of anxiety leading up to it as well. So that was just a really cool fun fact that I didn't know before. But um, yeah, we'll call it Holy Week, Passion Week, whatever you want to call it. Um, but so it starts on Palm Sunday. Call it Palm Sunday. And Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And this is actually really um, significant because it was actually prophesied in Zechariah. Um, Zechariah 9, 9 to be specific that um Jesus would ride in on a donkey and the reason why he rode in on a donkey is also significant because donkeys which are not only my favorite animal but um and donkeys have like a literal if you've ever looked on a donkey's back it has like a cross every donkey has like a cross like a pattern in their fur that looks like a cross so that's really cool too but a donkey's um signifies peace um it's just been an always, always an animal that signifies peace now if jesus had chosen to ride in to jerusalem on a horse it would have been a little different so he specifically chose the donkey for a reason and a lot of um, men back in the day who were kind of like um in war or like were soldiers I guess would ride on horses so if he had rode in on a horse it kind of would have been a total different message that he was um kind of giving these people and people were already talking about Jesus and priests were already um you know scheming ways to kill Jesus so he had to be kind of careful you know people were talking about him everywhere he was the talk of the town and when he came in on the donkey people were were shouting hosanna so they knew he he was they were shouting hosanna shouting hosanna and they welcomed him with palm branches um i think palm branches were also kind of like a sing like a significant to like peace um so yeah they welcomed him shouting hosanna and with palm branches um so that was palm sunday he's coming into jerusalem i'm pretty sure he stays in bethany 
and um, that was Sunday. So then Monday rolls around. Um, and that is when Jesus and the disciples head to the temple in Bethany. And this is where he did a lot of his teaching throughout this whole week. He continues to teach, continues to preach, continues to teach everybody his ways. He also starts to talk about um, the like future prophecies and um, just basically preparing the, the people for what he knows is about to come. Um, when he's going into Bethany with his disciples, he also runs across this fig tree and it was a tree that was like bloomed and nourished, but it didn't have any figs on it. So he, Jesus saw that as a sign as well. So it was like a tree with nourishment, but it wasn't bearing any fruit. So basically saying like, um, like people these days, like they are, might be living a good life or they might seem like they have it all together um, in person, but if you're not bearing the fruit of the Lord, then really you are dead at the roots. And so when Jesus passed this fig tree, he cursed it. Um, and it was also kind of like a symbol to his disciples. Like, just because you say that you believe in me or you you idolize this God um, and you are religious and you have it all together, but you're not bearing the fruit of the Lord. You're not following in his law. You're not, you don't have a relationship with him. You don't believe in the Messiah, then you're not going to bear fruit. So he curses the tree, the fruit tree in front of his disciples. Now, later on in the week, the disciples will see this fruit tree again. And they will even point it out to Jesus saying like, oh my gosh, that tree is rotted. The tree completely rots. And that was after Jesus cursed it. He's basically saying like, yeah, you don't, you don't believe in me. You don't have me in your life. You don't bear my fruit. So you're really no better than dead, rotted at the roots. Um, so when they go up to the temple, Jesus notices that there are merchants everywhere selling their stuff greed has taken over the temple you're not supposed to have any kind of merchant in the temple this is a holy place there should be no reason why there were merchants in this temple that would be like going to a church or like an old historic site and all these little tourist people are trying to sell their stupid bracelets that have your name on it or magnets for your dumb fridge, just stupidness. So Jesus comes and he literally overthrows these people's tables. Could you imagine just like walking into like a flea market or something and you're with Jesus and he just starts knocking their tables over and he basically drives them out. Basically, it's like, hey, this is not okay. You're not going to sell your crap here. Um, uh, da, da, da. So, yeah, they were basically making a marketplace out of God's house, God's temple. And at this time, chief priests are still trying to look for ways and reasons to arrest Jesus and kill him. But they were afraid because his words were really starting to cause like not not really an uproar but people were were soaking up his words were soaking up his teachings and they didn't want to you know create i guess like a riot at the time um so jesus is still in bethany and um there is a time I'm actually gonna read from my cute little Bible I've got here. I'm going to read, if you have a Bible with you and you want to open it up, we're going to read Matthew 26. So, do, 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 Matthew 26. Okay, so this is Matthew 26. 
6. While Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar, very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were in... I can't read that word. Why this waste? They asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. So that would be... I mean perfume these this like today's day is still super expensive so basically you're it's like taking your most expensive bottle of perfume and you're dumping the whole thing out um but so it was really sig significant because that was an expensive item that you wouldn't just waste um why this waste they asked this perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. This poor you will always, uh, the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. So he's saying like, could I give this to the poor, this money to the poor any day, but I will not always be here. Which is also him talking about his death coming up. He's, like he says, he's already knows. Um, when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, ever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So he's at Simon's house. Um, I'm guessing, I'm not sure if this was like his wife. No, 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 it was just a woman, just a normal woman. Um, came to him and did that with the perfume. I don't know. I just thought that was really powerful as like, even though there were so many people who did not believe, there were so many people who did and were willing to give up whatever for him. Um, so that was all on Monday, basically still leading up to the crucifixion He's still teaching his ways, still speaking to his disciples. Then Tuesday rolls around. Jesus is still teaching. He's still at the temple teaching. This is when the disciples notice the fig tree and how it had rotted out. And the priests are still looking to kill Jesus. People hung to his words. That was the thing. People were hanging and clinging onto Jesus's words. So the priests were basically just trying to be careful. Like they really wanted to kill him bad, but they didn't want to create, like I said, an uproar. So then Wednesday comes, Jesus is still teaching. Can you believe like just knowing that you are so close to your horrible, horrible death and mockery but just still teaching, still doing your job, still doing what God sent him there to do. Um, and at this point, Jesus, he is not holding back. He was letting everybody know, I am the Messiah and I'm God's son. I am the Holy One. He doesn't hold back. He tells it all. Um... And this is when Judas starts to get greedy. He actually, I'm pretty sure he actually makes a comment as well about perfume. Because perfume is brought up a lot about people anointing Jesus with it. Or mostly women because it's perfume. But um, anointing Jesus with their perfume. And Judas is like, I could have sold that for some money. But Jesus, or Judas gets, um, greedy. Hello, Rebel has joined the pod. He wants to learn about Jesus, right? <laughs> um, ooh, you got some eye boogers in your eye, Rebel. Um, so Judas basically goes to the priests and he's like, look, what can you give me in exchange for Jesus? Like, I can hand him over to you. That's like saying, like, he's handing over the most wanted man. Like, what will you give me? 
he portrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Now, I looked up how much, like, how much money that really was. And in those days, it was basically enough for four months of wages during the time. So, it was a good bit of money that they they gave him. Was it... I still don't think that was worth... I mean, I don't think anything would be worth betraying Jesus. Um, but he does. I'm going to read John 18. Alright, let's get this. John 18. Alright, this is where Jesus... Um, is arrested so it's kind of like um jumping forward a little bit but when he had finished praying jesus left with his disciples and crossed the kidron valley on the other side there was a garden and he and his disciples went into it now judas who betrayed him knew the place because jesus had often met there with his disciples so jesus came to the garden guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the priests, chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. So this is... My dog is gagging. Um, so, yeah, this is jumping a little bit. So, um, I'm going to read it, but we'll come back to it. Or actually... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it that you want? Jesus of Naz Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Which to me is crazy. They're literally coming to arrest this man. But then when... <coughs> My dog is <laughs> interrupting with his nasty gags. You know how dogs like randomly get nauseous and then they start licking everything? He's doing that right now. Um, yeah, it's just crazy to me how like these men are coming to arrest him for his to die. And when they said, I'm he, they still fell to the ground. He had that much power that he like, they're like, oh, like I'm in his presence. Like, whew, and they fell to the ground. Um, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let then let these men go. Basically, he's talking about his disciples. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his ear. And then Jesus is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, we're not going to get violent. If Jesus wanted to, he could have had God strike them down right then and there. But he knew this has to happen. So we can't fight back. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of, y'all these names are hard, um, Cyphus, the high priest that year. Cyphus, I, I'm probably not saying that right, was the one who advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Um, so that was when Jesus was arrested, but that, um, is actually on Thursday, I believe, that that happens, that he gets arrested. So, we'll skip to Thursday. So, my dog. <laughs> Passover begins, so the Last Supper. Um, this is when Jesus... Has the Last Supper with all his disciples. And he actually calls out Judas to his face. He's like, one of you are going to betray me. And every single disciple goes around the table and they're like, surely it's not me, Lord, right? Surely it's not me. Judas is the last one to ask him. It's not me, right? And he's like, yeah, it's actually you. You're the one. And Judas was like, oh, but Judas still ate. Judas still ate. Isn't that crazy? Like, I don't know what, like, I wouldn't want somebody at my dinner table that is about to literally throw me to the wolves. Are you kidding me? But that's Jesus's grace for you. 
Um, so, <laughs> I'm going to give Rebel some grace right now for interrupting my podcast with his stomach issues. Um, he also washes all the disciples' feet, which I just think is such a beautiful image because it should be us washing his feet, but he goes around and washes all of the disciples' feet. I just think that's beautiful. Um... So he does, he calls out Judas and then they head for the Mount, the Mount of Olives. Um, and that is when he says to the disciples, one of you is going to actually deny me three times. And, um, so he got, and of course, once again, all the disciples are like, no, it's not me. It's not me. But he's like, nope, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three, three times. And then Jesus goes to the garden, um, where he, the same garden, I believe that he was arrested in. And, um, it says that Jesus has so much anxiety that he sweats blood. Like he's, he's a human. So obviously he's going to have those human emotions and he's like freaking out. Like it's, he knows the day is coming. Like it's the next day he's going to be nailed to the cross and he's so anxious and he's praying to God. He's saying like, if, if, you know, if, if this is your will, Lord, I will rebel. It's eating my plant now. <laughs> Lay down. Um, so he's praying in the garden. Um, do, do, do. so we'll talk about Peter's denials. Peter is the one who denies him three times. Um, so basically, after they arrest Jesus, which I just talked about, that is when Peter denies him. So Peter follows them to where they take Jesus, and he's kind of just like lingering around because he wants to see what's going to happen. And then people are like, hey, aren't you the guy that was with Jesus of Nazareth? And he's like, no, 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 that's not me. It's, you've got me confused with somebody else. And then another person, hey, weren't you just with Jesus? No, 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 that wasn't me. Third time, no, it wasn't me. And then the rooster crows. And Simon's like, Simon Peter is like, oh, yeah. So that was me that denied him three times. Now, Judas, after Jesus gets arrested, Judas, he starts to regret his betrayal. <laughs> Too late, dude. Too freaking late. He takes his the money and he throws it I can't remember what he throws it into this specific place which you're not supposed to throw money apparently he gets rid of the money and he says I've just basically given over somebody who who's innocent and then he goes and he hangs himself crazy all of that just for him to hang himself all right, then I'm going to flip over to Matthew 27. All right. So, yeah, Jesus hangs himself. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, Judas threw his money into the temple. So, they bring Jesus to Pilate. I think you pronounce it pilot, um, which was like the governor, I believe, at the time. And he asks him, are you the king of the Jews? Like, why have they arrested you? And at first he's like, I don't really understand why they... Rebel! Come here! Come here! Rebel! Sorry, guys. Momentary pause for Rebel's pukiness. <laughs> All right. Um, so he's basically like, I don't really understand why this man is being arrested. I don't really see anything wrong that he's done. I don't, I don't see. And basically he left it into the hands of the people. He was like, who do you want me to arrest? Because I will release this one man, a murderer, whose name was uh, Barabbas, I think is how you say it. Barabbas. He was 
a criminal. He said, I can release him or I can release Jesus. Who do you want me to release? They chose the criminal. They chose to release the criminal over Jesus. And then he says, all right, well, if you say so, well, what should I do with him? What is, should his punishment be? Crucify him. Crucify him. They were screaming at him to crucify him. So what does he do? He listens to the people. Instead of making his own judgment, he's just like, okay, we'll crucify him. Which is just crazy to me. Rebel, come here. He's going crazy. Do, do, do. Okay. So. All right. So that's him before Pilate. All right. So then they finally, they have Jesus arrested and um, Pilate's like, okay. So they have him flogged, which I think when you flog someone's when you, in that thing with the, that wooden thing around your head and your arm so you can't move. Um, and he begins to be spat on, beaten over the head. They, Pilate puts a, a sign on him that says, Jesus, the King of the Jews. Basically, as like a mock, like to mock him. Because they didn't believe him. Um, so, I'm going to read this. This is Matthew 30, 27, 32. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. The skull. I'm pretty sure that's where they crucified him. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from that cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Now, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all of the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So I, the Lord wanted this time to be just desolate and just... Can you not? Stop! Uh, God wanted this time to be just depressing and um, just like... Like, this this is the biggest event in history. He's like, this is not going to be a sunny day. Um, then, immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Um, so another one of the uh, people who was being crucified next to him was actually like asked Jesus while they're hanging there. He's like, Jesus, like, he basically was like, um, please tell me that once we die that I will be in the kingdom with you and Jesus was like you will be in the kingdom with me which I think is just amazing how someone is being you're being crucified literally right next to Jesus and he's like you're gonna be there with me like oh I don't know um all right so basically Jesus dies on the cross and um 
the Passover was about to begin and you cannot have men hanging on a cross during Passover. It was like a holy, it's a very holy like thing. And so they, the soldiers come out. Jesus was actually already dead. When he died, he says, it is finished. That is the last things that come out of Jesus's mouth. And then they come just to make sure he's dead and they spear him in the side and water and blood pour out of him. They break the legs of the other guys to quicken up the death, their death, and then they take them off the crosses and bury them. Well, I believe it was, um, was it Joseph? Hang on. Got to, oh. Uh, I'm trying to remember who went and got his body. Hang on with me, guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yes. Joseph of Aram, Ar I can't say these places, but Joseph went to Pilate and said, hey, can I have Jesus's body? And so we gave over Jesus's body and um, they buried him in the tomb and they didn't, there was still words going around about Jesus and they were like, hey, like, um, this guy, if it's true, if he really is the Messiah, he's supposed to rise in three days. So they order for guards to guard the tomb. And, um, so on Saturday, it's just really somber because, you know, Jesus is dead. People are mourning him. He's guards are watching over the tomb. Sunday morning, Easter, Resurrection Day, and Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb super early and she sees that the tomb is open and she's like, oh my gosh, somebody has come and stolen Jesus's body. What is going on? She's, like, she's cr outside of the tomb crying her eyes out. She's like, where has my savior gone? And then... Jesus comes to her, but she cannot recognize him. She doesn't recognize Jesus. And um, she thinks it's the gardener at first. She's like, have you seen anybody taken my teacher? Like, please help me. Like, have, what have you seen? He says one word, one word. He says, Mary. And she knew immediately that it was Jesus. And she's like, teacher, teacher, like, you know, like, here you are, here you are, you wrote just like you said you would. And so they go to the disciples, which are hiding. The disciples are in hiding at this point because, I mean, they're kind of like wanted. Um, so she runs and she tells them Jesus has risen. Some of them, some of the disciples are even like, I will not believe it until I see it. And then Jesus comes to them they don't recognize him at first, of course, but then he finally shows himself to them. He's, I'm here. Um, they show, he showed them the scars on their hands, the scars on her side, on his side. He has a disciple touch his hand and he's like, I believe it is you. Um, and then Jesus ascends into heaven and they just glorify him and praise him and worship him and it's just a beautiful beautiful story you guys I hope that I told it in the best way um and <laughs> I'm so sorry that my dog has been nauseous this entire podcast and you can probably hear him hacking in the background um, I'm about to go help him. But anyway, guys, happy, happy, happy Easter. I pray that you guys had a great day. I pray that this podcast can bring you some understanding and maybe some peace and grace. And I definitely want to encourage you guys to go read Matthew and John and Luke um, and just interpret it in your own way and read. And just uh, once you read those letters and read and Jesus's words, it's just so powerful. But anyway, happy Easter. Um, like I said, follow me on socials and I will see you guys next time. Bye.